Good evening. Welcome to Thursday Night Bible Study. My name is Nellie Chavez. I'm J.D. Longoria. And I'm Jordan Aguilar. Thank you so much for being a part of this study tonight. This month's theme is A Perfect Ending, and it comes from the last chapter in Luke, Luke 24, verses 51 through 53, and I'm going to read it to you out of the New King James Version. It says, Now it came to pass, while he blessed them, talking about Jesus, that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven, and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. So as Jesus blesses his disciples, he is carried up into heaven. He has fulfilled all that the Father has asked him to do here on the earth. He's done his part. It's finished. It's complete. And now a few verses before this, this is what he charges his disciples. This is what he tells them. We're going to read verses 46 through 49 out of the same chapter. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send you the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. That word Terry just kind of caught my eye. The dictionary definition of Terry means to wait mm -hmm. or to abide. And they are to wait and to abide until they are endued. This word endued comes from the Latin to be led in. Another meaning is to put on as putting on clothes. So the disciples are to wait until they are led or until they are covered by the promise with power mm -hmm. from the Holy Spirit. What a beautiful, beautiful picture Jesus paints for us. I know that the disciples must have scattered after Jesus' crucifixion. They were probably hiding out, terrified, fearful. They had seen the torture and the death of their rabbi, their messiah, their leader, their friend. And now, after they've seen him for 40 days, after he's come back from the dead, they've talked to him in his resurrected state. They fellowshiped with him. He's walked with them a few more days, and he gets ready to depart. But he gives them these instructions before he leaves. He says they are to wait for the promise so they can preach in his name and share the good news of repentance and remission of sins. As I was thinking about these passages, I was thinking about how sometimes it's so easy for us to do things that are that come natural to us. We have a natural bent in our lives. And and so when God asks us to do those things that come naturally to us, that's not very difficult. Sometimes those things just go along with our personality. But then there's other times that God asks us to do things that we can only do in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so tonight I wanted to start by asking our panel, can you give an example from the Word of God where God has asked his children to do something they couldn't possibly do in their own strength? When I was thinking about this, I thought about Abraham having to sacrifice Isaac. God asked Abraham to put his promise, the promise that God had fulfilled to him on the altar. And I don't know about you, but I know that that must have been something difficult even to think. I mean, even for me to think about now, I know the outcome of what God asked Abra Abraham, and it's still difficult for me to think about that. Brother J.D., can you give an example from the word about a time when God has asked his children to do something they couldn't possibly do in their own strength? Um, when I was uh, going over this question, there was lots of, you know, different things throughout the Bible where, you know, God gave um, them the power to, to, to uh, you know, succeed in whatever they were going to do. But the, the one that I focus on is um, the story of, uh, in Joshua, I think it's chapter 6, of when they were going to take over the city of Jericho. Mm -hmm. 
Now they had already sent out spies, you know, um, I think Rahab had protected the two spies, but you know, sometimes you need to picture that these walls were so massive that, you know, they weren't conquered by anybody right. else, right, right. you know, so looking through the natural, you know, when God says, hey, you know, we're going to take this over, you know, it could be easily when we see walls build up in front of us, even spiritual walls, that this, there's no way we can get around this. But Joshua had already, you know, been part of the first 12 spies that, you know, Moses sent out when they were going to take Canaan land. So he already knew, you know, he's seen so much stuff, this is possible with God. Mm -hmm. right, right. And he knew that it wasn't going to be our power that can do this. It was going to be the power of God. And so, you know, when you hear what God told him to do, you know, march around the walls seven times, mm -hmm. you know, and then on the seventh day, we're going to blow the horns and we're going to shout as loud as possible. You know, just thinking about, you know, maybe the soldiers on that wall watching these guys, you know, walk around this, this <laughs> all those days. And they're thinking, you know, what are these guys doing? But, you know, in the carnal, you think that, you know, what, yes. you know, what is God doing? But in, God had a plan. And when you look at the seventh day and the seventh time, everybody shouted and praised. Those walls came down, you know. And sometimes we don't look at the part of the scripture where he put where they would be going straight in. So they didn't have to climb up over a bunch of rubble and stuff to right, get right, in right. those walls. You got to imagine sections of these walls just came down. You know, it's hard for us to not fat to, you know, not mm -hmm. think they just fell over. But, you know, these were great walls that they built. And when God said that they came straight down, it made a clear path for them to That's go true. in. And so this was possible for Joshua to take the city. Mm -hmm. And he did that. You know, it wasn't their own power because I'm sure they could, you know, if you watch old movies they have battering rams and stuff where they're right, right. hitting the walls and trying but you know they couldn't get through so you know lots of i'm sure this isn't the only army that ever tried to take jericho but this was the only successful army to take jericho right, right, right. and they took it because of god and the power that he gave mm -hmm. yes. and what i like about this is you know uh, if you read on there, you know, they didn't take any spoils or anything from the city. And I, I'm kind of like a history buff. And, you know, um, they've, you know, went to the city of Jericho. And there's a section of the wall that, you know, is still kind of in place. But I think that's the section that, you know, Rahab's house was mm. in, you right, know, right, because right. they told her to stay in her house. Everything else would be mm. destroyed except for that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just looking back and seeing that. But that's all a possibility with who? The power of God. Amen. Right, right, right. I've I've read that the walls were so wide that they had chariot races on top of them. Yeah. So those were massive. Yeah, massive walls, and you know, was, you know, just you know, maybe like the wall. You know, if you ever seen the wall of China, it's mm -hmm. you know, the, they're huge. You know, and you gotta think, like Sister Nelly said, that they had chariot races on top of these walls, and just thinking that, you know, it's not like one or two chariots. When back in those days. You know, they had, you know, six, five or six across, <laughs> yeah. you know, and they're racing those on there. So, you know, just thinking the power of God was able to do that, bring those walls down so the, the children of Israel can go in and, and, and conquer that part of the land. Because, mm -hmm. you know, just doing this one little battle, mm -hmm. now the rest of the, everybody else in the land knew that the children of Israel were not Amen. something to mess with. Amen. 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 What about you, Jordan? I was just thinking about those chariots. The, Escalade chariots <laughs> with 24s and spinners on them. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. So when you ask this question, Ellie, I mean, gosh, I mean, there, there are several examples in the word where, you know, the, the power of God has, you know, moved through an individual, whether it be Abraham and Sarah, right, having, uh, mm -hmm. having uh, Isaac uh, so late in their life, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be uh, uh, Elijah calling down fire from heaven. It could be Noah and the ark. I mean, um, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego facing the fire. Um, you know, there's just several examples. I think, I think one, though, that, uh, you know, really resonated with me was um, the, the children of Israel and their escape from uh, uh, the Pharaoh um, and, and escaping from Egypt, right? And so, you know, uh, God's children had been slaves for 400 years in Egypt, and um, Moses, uh, God had spoken to Moses and he gave Moses this plan, and he's like, you know, I mean, it was, it was pretty laid out in Exodus, uh, early part of Exodus, and he's saying that, you know, I, I, I need you to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go, and you're going to do this, you know, several times. Uh, Pharaoh's going to let you go. I'm going to harden his heart, 
uh, you're going to stand, you know, uh, you know, in front of the Red Sea, basically. And, and he's given it like a play by play. And Moses is really the only person who, who uh, had like received this revelation directly right from God. And so, you know, he's he's um, the leader of I mean, and we're talking, you know, we're not talking hundreds of people, thousands of people. I mean, this is, you know, a million plus. Yes. Right. Uh, I mean, and of slaves. Right. And so, you know, um, and then they're they uh, they're free. Right. Uh, God sends a, um, a series of different plagues and mm-hmm. and disasters. Right. And uh, finally, we break Pharaoh's grip over their life, and and they're free. They're 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 running towards the Red Sea, and and it's just now we're looking at a Red Sea in front of us, right? And so, you know, at, at that moment, I, this looks like an impossible yeah. task. It feels like an impossible task, and not only that, to make matters worse, Pharaoh decides, you know what? Okay, I want my slaves back now. I I, <laughs> I yeah, I'm I'm gonna go after you. I'm gonna capture you, and it's gonna be worse. Than, than you know than the former and so um he's on hot pursuit right sending his best chariots to go get him and god or Ma- uh, moses holds out a staff right and god does the miraculous right yes. then and there right you know and i know i know a lot of times people ask all the time you know like um you know why isn't god doing miracles like that extraordinary today you know what i mean and and you know there's i, I think there's plenty of explanation as maybe why or why not but i think this is a great picture of uh, God's deliverance over, um, you know, the, the Christian, the, the Christian believer, right, is that, you know, we were once slaves to sin, yes. right, and there was, there was nobody coming after us to save us, there was, there was, you couldn't even save us, right, I mean, I, I think about this, uh, you know, in, in, you know, the terms that, uh, or the times, you know, especially with Moses, I mean, we live in America, right, where if I get sick, I mean, I'm not, I'm worried about it, but I'm not really that worried, because there's a hospital down yes. the street, Right. If I get lost, well, I got my phone for GPS. Right. There's always a plan B, mm-hmm. a plan C, mm-hmm. maybe even a plan D. Right. Like there's there's backups for backups here. And we're blessed to have that. But, you know, in for Moses situation, right, there is no other plan. <laughs> there's you you got to you got to go with it. And so, you know, there's a lot of pressure in that moment. And, you know, like I said, I, I just I really I really commend Moses. And, and I, I there's nothing really I can say to relate to that. But the man had faith, right, to stretch his hand out, and God did a great miracle. And like I said, only God can deliver, right? It's through the power of God that He can deliver, um, and He can deliver a people, He can deliver a nation, He can deliver the individual. No matter how big or small it is, right, we need to rely upon God's deliverance for it to be a true deliverance, right? And we learned that the children of Israel moved through the Red Sea, and as Pharaoh's army was pursuing them, the Red Sea collapsed back on them. And no longer was there an enemy pursuing them. They were absolutely and totally free because the word says, he who the son has set free is free indeed. Amen. And, and you know, um, maybe we're not seeing the Red Sea kind of miracles, Mm -hmm. but God is still in the miracle working business. And and God is still asking us to do things that we can only do in the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, I want to bring it down now to Mm -hmm. our to our own lives. Because I know that God asks things of us sometimes that we feel are impossible or, or we feel we are not able to do in our own strength. I know, um, and some of you probably know this already, but my husband and I were separated for seven years. Mm-hmm. And I clearly remember the day that I was in church and God spoke to my heart. It wasn't an, a voice that was audible, but it was in my spirit as we were worshiping and getting ready to um, open the altar for prayer. I remember the Lord asking me to do something, and I knew immediately when he spoke that into my heart, I knew what he wanted me to do. I knew that he wanted me to step out and begin the reconciliation process, but I was too scared to do it. And so I remember asking God, please, Lord, ask me anything else but that. Mm -hmm. I'll go Mm -hmm. to China, I'll go to Mm -hmm. Africa, Mm -hmm. and I've never wanted to go to China or Africa. (laughs) Because I know that um, they don't have running water necessarily in every place that you go, and they don't have um, they don't have toilets with running water when, when you go to China. I, I know that for a fact because I've had friends that have been there, or in China, and so that to me was an impossible task to do, and it took probably about a whole month of trying to talk God out of that, but 
God won out. And so I had to surrender myself and I had to humble myself and I had to reach out to my to my husband who at, by this time had given up hope that there would ever be a reconciliation after seven years. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing that I thought would be impossible to do, it was in my own strength. But Holy Spirit gave us the grace and the strength and the ability to heal, to restore, to strengthen this marriage, and to get this marriage back on God's track. Mm -hmm. So um, I asked the panel to share something that God has asked them that they could never have imagined they would be able to do. <laughs> Jordan? <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm laughing at it because I feel like, uh, you know, I share my testimony, you know, here and there, but I, as uh, I was a single man after my first, boy, you know, girlfriend. I was a single man for about eight, nine years, somewhere, you know, in there. And I told myself for years that, you know what, God's got the right one out there for me. I just know it. I know this I know this woman's not going to have any kids. I know, you know what I mean? Uh we're just we're just going to, you know, be, you know, start from the, you know, step 1 and and work our way up and you know, just live the good life here. And and I I mean, you know what? God's blessed me with a, a great life. I love my life. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But I when I met my wife, she already had five children. And so, um like I said, I did not want any part of that. And I was like, you know, she's cute, whatever, but, uh, you know, great friend. But, you know, I think God had worked it out. I, when we look back, I'm thinking if we would have moved too fast or too slow yes. in either direction, right, it, it, this would never have happened. If, if I didn't fall in love with the kids first, yes. right, and the kids see a man come into my wife's life as a friend, as a, as a, um, what would you call it? Like just, just a friendly face because the, the folks that had been in her life prior to that were always trying to, it, it was all about the relationship. It was all about the romance, right? But I came in as a friend. Mm -hmm. And so because I came in as a friend, right, the kids opened up to me differently and they felt safe around me. They felt yes. comfortable around me. And so when that happened, right, then God opened my eyes to see like, hey, wait, you know what? I do want you know, this type of woman in my life, but really more importantly, I want a mother to my children. And so I'm looking at the way she mothers her children. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Okay. So my, my told my perspective totally changed. Mm -hmm. And so when that happened, right. Um, yeah, my life went, uh, totally, you know, you, you just never say never. Okay. We, that's never just, that's, yeah, you just never say never, never with God. Never. And, uh, you know, I, I could tell you even being a teacher, I, that was not, I, I didn't like English. I didn't like teaching. <laughs> I didn't like school. But hey, I'm an English teacher now. Ooh. I didn't want you know a wife with this many children. But hey, we're married now, and we're, we've built, and we are coming out of debt right now. Yeah, God has God has gone before us. We we are on the track to be done with renting and own a house. Yes, you know, own vehicles now. And I mean, I'm, we're just as long as we are staying in this word, staying committed to to the church. You know what I mean. Uh, staying faithful, with, you know, paying our tithes and our offerings. Right? We're just, we're just following the word. We keep, we're sticking to the basics here, right? Yes. I'm seeing God expedite the process, and I mean, I'm just like, wow. I'm just like, wow. I, I, I sit back every day. There's unexpected blessings yes. every single day, and and I just, you know, April and I just give God glory for it, and we're so and, grateful. And that happens when you follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Right, right. God is able to work all the details of your life because. Mm -hmm. As I look back on our separation and the financial um, stress that it had put on both of us oh, yeah. and the <laughs> debt that came along with the, with the financial stress that we were living as two single people, mm -hmm. God restored all of that. Yes, God, yeah. God blessed in every area of our lives. It's amazing. And that's, yeah. how, that's how God will do it. When you heed his voice, he's got a perfect plan. J.D., what is something that God has asked you to do that you didn't think you could do in your own strength, that well, you knew you couldn't do, you could do in your own strength. I, I think kind of just what I'm doing now, you know, being bold and sharing the knowledge of his word. I, I'm i telling you, maybe not even four years ago, there's no way I'd try wow. to get up here. Uh, you know, I, I feel right. comfortable, you know, sharing the word with God with people just, you know, if they ask me. Right, right. But going up in front of people, I think um, mm. we were at the Dream Center when I was first asked to do this, to stand on the panel. And I was like, I was like, there's no way I can do this. <laughs> no way. I, 
I don't want to do this. <laughs> Maybe I'm sick. You know, I was thinking, uh, <laughs> what can I do Maybe to get out of this? Uh, you know, but just, you know, I sit back and look back and I'm thinking of retaining the knowledge of what, you know, hearing just different pastors and teachings and stuff. And, you know, sometimes it'll, it'll, the Holy Ghost will, hey, you remember this? Yes. And I can refer back to that. But I wouldn't, you know, even with the teachings now, you know, it's little things that I've learned in the past. But, mm. you know, it just being myself, I wouldn't be able to understand or interpret the word yes. or, you know, convert it over to where people can understand that, too. Mm. And I think that's a gift from God and just being bold. You know, I could, it's different. You know, I can sit out in front of people and coach teams. I can sit in front of a classroom. But it was whenever I was sharing the word of God, I didn't feel comfortable. You know, I was. I was thinking of little things, you know, <laughs> like, why, why do you think, you know, when you're teaching to a crowd and you see someone back there, why are they smiling? Or yeah. why are they mad? Did yeah. I say something? And, you know, they're, you, they're texting, you, they're yeah. bored. I'm a <laughs> boring know, teacher. Uh, yeah. I didn't get any smiles. Yeah, What's I going know. on? Yeah. You know, but, you know, when you're teaching kids, you don't care what they think because nah. you're in charge, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know. Whatever. So, <laughs> but I think just that, you know, the Holy Spirit giving me the boldness to, to bring forth this word and, you know, who knows where it will go from here. You know, I'm not trying to <laughs> jump the gun or anything. But never I'm just saying, say never, brother. <laughs> never I'm just say saying, never. you know, I, I'm feeling more comfortable in, in the boldness God. of God. And it's only because of the Holy Spirit and what yes. he, he, mm-hmm. he, he, you know, Jesus will fill you with that confidence that you need. Yes. You know, when you read these stories in the Bible of how, how was, you know, Paul, how was he able to sit in front of Roman, you know, emperors and stuff? And it was because the boldness of God that he gave, he, that God gave him, you know, the Holy Spirit. And you got to think you can't do things on your own. You got to have the Holy Spirit there to help and build you up, and it'll it'll give you that boldness and that faith and that you know, you know the out the outlook to, or over to overcome things that are put mm-hmm. in your path. You know, just like you know what you're saying with, <laughs> you know, I remember when you started first dating, you know, uh, April. I was like, you know, I was thinking. I remember him saying he didn't want yeah, a big old yeah, family, yeah. stuff yeah. like that. No. But, you know, God <laughs> will do things that, you know, we have no understanding of. And, you know, I think just, you know, just sharing the word and being bold about it. You know, God has put that in my life. Amen, amen. Holy Spirit is so beautiful. He gives us the power to be able to do what God asks us to do. And so our part is to trust in Holy Spirit. We've come through so much this year, and I know that, some of us are barely hanging on. I feel it everywhere that I go. I see it in some of the children that I'm around. It's, it's been a tough year. And as we get ready to wrap up 2020, I wanted to ask the panel, what is one word that you would like to share with those of us, with, with those who are watching this recording? Mm-hmm. Amen. You know, I, I was thinking about this word and just the theme of this, of, of this month is the perfect ending. And, um, you know, I have some buddies who, who uh, do, you know, film or shoot commercials and these sort of things. And so what's interesting is, uh, you know, I talk with them and, and how do they do that. And I've been a part of them, actually, a few of them. But we always start with what's, what's the, the end message? Mm. What's the end scene? What's, we're, and we work our way backwards to the beginning. And what, what I want to share with you today, right, is that God has set the end right from the beginning. It's already set. You're not going to change it, right? He's already purposed. And the Bible says here in, in Job uh, 42 and 2, it says, yes. Job is talking. He says, I know that you can do all things and that there is no purpose of yours that can be thwarted. And I know in Proverbs it talks about there are many plans in a man's heart. Oh, I'm sorry here. <laughs> there, are, there are many plans in a man's heart, but the Lord's will will prevail. And so, you know, it doesn't matter what's, you know, going, the situation in your life, things that are in, in your control, out of your control. God's plan and purpose in your life is going to be uh, fulfilled. It's going to prevail in your life. You just got to continue to seek God. You got to con- continue to put him first. You got to continue to do all the things that you know that are right. Amen. And so uh, if, if you do that and you just have a, with the faith of a mustard seed, it doesn't matter what, what it is. God's going to pull you through. He's going to see you through. One thing that always encourages me is this. God did not bring me this far along to just leave yes. me hanging, to just, to just drop me. And so he, he is faithful to fulfill the good work in, uh, that he has started in your life. So please don't give up. Don't feel encouraged. Don't grow weird in, you know, in your good doing. What God sees what you're doing, and you will 
reap uh, wh what you sow, what Amen. you have sown. Amen. Amen. What about you, JD? <laughs> That's kind of it's funny because my my the word I've been thinking about was fulfillment. You know, um, God, you know, you. says that He is the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and Omega. And my thing is, is you know, I'm looking at all the things happening now to us. You know, we think it's a bad thing, but to me, it's just setting up God's will it's and what up. He. You know, yeah. it's it's prophecy. You know. I look at little things like, you know, uh, you know, in the Middle East, all these countries signing peace treaties now with Israel. Mm, right. You know, we, we don't see, you know, we see with the carnal mind what's happening around us, you know, what's happening locally and stuff like that. But I, I, I kind of look at the big picture. Right. You know, I, I'm a part of that little puzzle that God's put mm. in place here on earth, but the overall goal is for Jesus to return. Right, right. And I'm just fulfilling what I need to do now until he returns. Mm. And that's what I'm looking at is fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Just live your life what you need to do to make heaven your home and, and, and pay attention to those things around you because, you know, it, who, you know, we see all this stuff going on or in our world, you know, just like this, you know, the COVID and everything else. And we just look at the little picture of how it's hurting us and this stuff, little things. But we got to understand there's a big picture in place that God is, mm -hmm. you know, and putting in place for the world, not just for us individually, but for the world, right, because right. he's coming back and we need to be ready to, you know, for his return. You know, I, you know, I've, you, you know, going to church for so long, I've heard people, you know, even when I was young, oh, we've heard that forever. Oh, God's going right, to come right, back. Right. You know, we don't know the time or hour when he's going to be, be returning, but we need to be ready. ready. You need to be ready. You need to be prepared for his return. And, and you got to notice these little things are just little things around you in the world that's happening. You know, it, you, you know, God's in control of everything. The election, you know, who's our president, who's our governor. He's in control of everything and let him be in control of yes, everything. Our job is to trust. Um, I know that something that I have felt this year is that the sleeping giant called the church mm -hmm. has had to get up, get up, wake up, get up, up right. wake up and get moving. And uh, it reminds me of the story of Jairus and his little daughter. Mm. And when Jesus came to her, the people were sure she was dead. And God uh, and Jesus said, get up, little girl. And so I feel like the church has gotten up. The church is mm -hmm. rising up right, right, right. to the place where God has called us. And I, I'm so grateful for that. And so my word to you tonight is just I, I pray that you would be encouraged that as you see the darkness that happens around us, just know that the light is going to break forth mm -hmm. on the east, in the east. And he's coming back soon, so we've got to be ready. And we've got to get up. It's not over until it's over. So I want to challenge you to have hope as we close out 2020 and step into 2021. Have hope because he's in control of all of it. And Holy Spirit is with us. He will never leave us. Let's, as we um, get ready to go on to the next portion of our service, to take up our tithes and our offerings. First, I want to thank you guys for being on this panel. Thank you so much for being prepared. Thank you for I am me. so blessed. I'm, I, I feel so blessed because I get to hear firsthand and right next to me the wisdom and the understanding that God has placed inside of you, gentlemen. Thank you. As we get ready to uh, pick up our tithes and our offerings tonight, I want to share the story and I'm not going to read it, but it's in Luke 19 and 11. It's the, where we find the parable of the coins or the minus. And, and Jesus tells about the king that goes off to a far country. And so he leaves his servants in charge of a certain amount of coins. And when he gets back, he calls those servants faithful that have invested their coins or their minus into um, creating more wealth creating more, um, doubled, some of them have doubled their coins. And, and God calls us servants that have done well with their finances. He calls them faithful. And so tonight I want to share with you that when we increase the kingdom, when we double what God has placed in our hands, we are faithful servants. As you give tonight, you're going you're gonna to see a number on your screen. As you give tonight, I want to remind you that you are being faithful. God calls you faithful with what he's given to you. So there's a number that will ap appear on your screen. And I want to thank you in advance for giving and for increasing, increasing his kingdom tonight. Amen. Thank you so much. 
Let's bow our heads as we get ready to close tonight's service. Father, we are thankful for the promises that you've given to us in your word. Father, thank you for the promise of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you for being our strength, our comfort, our courage. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being our wisdom. Thank you for being our peace. Thank you for leading us and guiding us. We honor you tonight. As we speak about you, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would be honored. Thank you. We recognize your love. We recognize your wisdom, your direction in our lives, and we are grateful people. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And thank you, Jesus, for your precious blood, for laying down your life, and for making this relationship with God the Father, God the the Son and God Holy Spirit possible through your sacrifice. We love you in Jesus' precious name. We hope to see you on Sunday. God bless you.